Hello and welcome to Inside Iraq. I'm Jassim Azawi. In our last episode, we shall examine the war on Iraq and ask whether it was a spectacular success or a colossal blunder. Today, Iraq is in a precarious position. Millions are still refugees in neighboring countries. Killings, poverty, corruption, and lack of services have become endemic, while the specter of renewed civil war still haunts the Iraqi people. But Iraq has also come a long way since the horrific days of 2006 and 2007. The country brags about its enlightened constitution, free elections, and vibrant media. But two key questions refused to abandon the whole American enterprise in Iraq. Was toppling Saddam's regime worth the enormous cost paid by millions of Iraqis? And where do Iraqis go to seek justice and compensation for this illegal war waged by Bush and Blair? To discuss the profit and loss sheet of the Iraq war, I am joined from London by George Galloway, a former British member of parliament and current TV presenter. And from Tel Aviv by General Ranan Gesin, a former senior advisor to former Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon. Gentlemen, welcome to Inside Iraq. George Galloway, I would like to start with you for obvious reasons. We don't have time to catalog the calamities and the pain and the suffering of what Iraq went through uh, during those seven years. But is there a silver lining among all these uh, horrible events that we witnessed from 2003 until now? No, I'm afraid the outlook is as gloomy as the uh, London leaden sky behind me. Uh, this was, to paraphrase the French statesman Talleyrand, a crime all right, but it was worse than a crime, it was a blunder. If you're talking as you are about profit and loss, about a balance sheet, then we have to factor a number of things in. First of all, a million dead Iraqis, according to Johns Hopkins University and the Lancet, the journal of the BMA, British Medical Association. Then there's the three million Iraqi exiles, many of them begging on the streets of neighboring countries. Then there's the fanaticization, first inside Iraq itself, and across the Muslim world, extremism has cascaded everywhere in the world as a result of this enterprise, and none of us is safer as a result. And the breaking of Arab power in Iraq has, of course, fantastically inflated Iranian power, uh, both in Iraq and in the region as a whole. And uh, none of that is, I'm sure, the intended consequence of the British parliamentarians, at least, uh, behind me. But they were duped into this war. And I've said from day one, before day one, this war was about oil, it was about Israel, uh, but above all, it was about demonstrating the overwhelming power of the United States of America to make sure that nobody would dream of contesting the claim that this would be a new American century. In that last respect, at least, it's been a colossal failure for the United States of America. For what has been demonstrated are the limitations of American power rather than the, uh, the uh, shock and awe that they thought that they would devastate the world's public opinion with. Before we go into that catalog outlined by George Galloway, Ranan Gesin, I would like to give you an opportunity to have a counter idea. From your perspective, uh, whether it's an Israeli perspective or uh, a Middle East expert, do you see it uh, otherwise? Well, there's no good and, and beautiful scenario in the Middle East any way you look at it. Uh, I think uh, there is a tendency by uh, Mr. Galloway to uh, romanticize a little bit about the period before the war. I mean, uh, Iraq was not uh, uh, in, uh, in a state of peace or tranquility at the time. I mean, people forget about the reign of terror of Saddam Hussein, what the casualties and the damage that he caused to the country and what he did in Kuwait before. Uh, so, I mean, it's not a question between uh, once there was a very beautiful and, and good Iraq, and then the United States stepped in and uh, destroyed everything and brought the calamity to the, to the Iraqi people. Uh, yes, there is great suffering in Iraq, but this suffering is not a result of the American invasion, uh, so to speak, in 2003. Rather, it's uh, the result of the uh, British Empire decision in 1923 to lump three uh, groups together, which were at loggerheads before, and create the, the modern-day Iraq for the sake of uh, Prince Faisal at the time. So uh, uh, we are going to put things in the proper perspective before we lament about the current condition and try to glorify the previous uh, era that existed in Iraq. 
Yeah, yeah, of course, the consequences uh, were easily foreseen. Uh, it's true that the whole of the million dead in Iraq were not killed by the United States, but they were killed as a consequence of the British and American invasion, illegal as you described it, uh, of that uh, country. And of course, we can't go around the world unpicking all the colonial settlements, otherwise the whole world will look like what Iraq looks like today. But uh, there was no al-Qaeda in Iraq before the invasion. Now there are thousands, maybe tens of thousands of al-Qaeda in Iraq. And by the way, al-Qaeda has been fantastically enhanced around the globe. Its attractiveness, its worldview has become enormously more popular amongst uh, many m Muslims, perhaps many tens of millions of Muslims, including here in my own uh, country. Iran was not powerful uh, in Iraq before the invasion, but it's certainly very powerful now. And uh, uh, the reality is, of course, uh, Israel knew that Iraq was a threat, the only Arab country that was economically and militarily any kind of counterbalance to themselves, so they wanted it destroyed. And now they want us to destroy Iran. They, they'll, the same arguments they adduced to encourage people to attack Iraq are now being uh, rehearsed and ready to be rolled out again in another farce uh, in the uh, run-up to a potential attack on Iran. George, are you insinuating that part of this American enterprise in Iraq was an Israeli agenda-driven? Uh, yes, I think it was for oil for Israel and to demonstrate American hegemony in the world. Uh, Israel uh, clearly regarded Iraq, and rightly so, as the only Arab country which, for all the uh, faults uh, that have been adumbrated, and uh, many of them I agree with, was a united uh, country, was one country with a science base, with a powerful military, with a strong uh, economic uh, uh, base, with oil, with gas, with educated people, highly educated people, and with a strong spirit of Arab nationalism. Are you nationalism, going to take it lying down, Ranan Gesina, the these all accusations? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed and flattered at the same time, you know, amazed about the lack of uh, historical context of Mr. Galloway's analysis and flattered by, you know, this conspiratorial theories. Israel is moving and shaking the Middle East. Israel does everything here. Look, this conspiratorial theory does not uh, square with the facts and the reality. Uh, Israel uh, did not uh, attack Iraq. Iraq did attack Israel several times since 1948. Iraq participated in all of the Israeli Arab wars. Uh, and Iraq was threatening Israel with missiles before Israel ever tried to threaten Iraq. We had no quarrel with Iraq. We don't have a common border with Iraq. Ranan Gesin, before I well, let uh, George course. Galloway answer this, let me just uh, read you a little quote by none other than by Philip Zelico, who is a member of a very special board called President's Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board. In a remark at the University of Virginia, he said the following. Why would Iraq attack America or use nuclear weapons against us? I will tell you what I think the real threat is, and actually has been since 1990. It is the threat against Israel, and this is the threat that dare not speak its name. Because the Europeans don't care deeply about that threat, I will tell you frankly. And the American government doesn't want to lean too hard on its rhetorically because it's not a popular sell. George Galloway, Philip Zilliko is one of the most important uh, American officials uh, during that period. And he has a security clearance much higher than top uh, security, top, uh, it's called word. He's a member of a very select group headed by Brent Scowcroft. At the time, they were submitting their reports directly to the president. And they were privy to access all kind of intelligence, including raw intelligence. So when he says this was uh, at least partly for the sake of Israel, does he talk from knowledge, or is he basically just say something that Ranan Gesin disagrees with? Uh, well, of course, Israel did attack Iraq. Uh, some people appear to have forgotten that uh, Israel flew all the way to Iraq to destroy Iraq's uh, nuclear energy facilities at Oz Iraq, long before Iraq had ever fired a single missile at Israel. So that's just factually wrong. And, of course, it's not that Israel shapes the Middle East 
It's that Israel shapes the United States of America. And anyone who followed the run-up to the war on Iraq, right from the drawing up of the project for the new American century, could see that Israel's strongest supporters in America were the strongest supporters of an attack and the destruction of Arab power uh, in Iraq. Now, I'm not trying to uh, change the hearts of any former advisor to General Sharon, assuming that such a thing exists. But uh, what I want to say to your audience is that the, the Iraq was a, an Arab nationalist secular power where Islamist fundamentalism was, in fact, brutally repressed. Now, Iraq is an Islamist fundamentalist country. In fact, 12 different countries with militias running around, armed to the teeth, murdering each other, yes, today, but who knows tomorrow. The Islamic Republic of Iran has become fantastically more powerful as a result of the destruction of Iraq. And lastly, the world view of the obscurantist uh, fanatics, bin Laden and the rest, is now fantastically more popular in the Muslim world. And when you tally all that up, throw in the million dead Iraqis, throw in the three million uh, exiles, throw in the people suffering, lack of electricity, poor nutrition standards for their children, uh, lack of security in Iraq, people can't send their daughters to school or university for fear. And look at the streets of Iraq, patrolled by Islamist gunmen of one variety, one stripe or another. You have to say that if you're drawing up a balance sheet, then the red ink, the debit, is hugely greater than any good which could have come out of such a thing. If that is the case, let's see if Rana and Gesin kind of bring something positive to this uh, bleak picture. How about a new constitution? How about some vibrant media? How about several elections? Do these countervail, do these counterbalance what George Galloway just outlined? Uh, is, are the Iraqis better off in the long run with the toppling of Saddam regime, Rana and Gesin? Look, Iraq is not the only bleeding country in the Middle East. Most of the countries are, 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 have internal disputes, are fighting each other. These are all the a result of the primordial sin of the creation of the uh, <laughs> British Empire in, around between 1923 and 1925. You seem uh, to forget, so, uh, Ranan, you seem the all, British yes, Empire they're, they're, also created Israel. This is the very cause, this is the very cause celeb of the entire problem in the Middle East. Well, they promised, they, they reneged on the promise later on, and then we had to do the rest of the job ourselves. But let's leave that, that's a different issue. We tend to forget what was the situation. It wasn't the, the result of the attack on the nuclear reactor uh, in, in Osirak in 1981. Or Iraq was not secular. Iraq was predominantly George. controlled by Sunnis. Now there is this clash between uh, Shiites and Sunnis now. George. But still, there is an opportunity today out of the bleeding Iraq to come up with a new constitution with democracy, which is trying to make its way in Iraq. So something good will come out of it, but it's going to take a long time. And Iraq, unfortunately, will continue to bleed like other countries in the Middle East. They're trying to pave their way into the future rather than go back to the glorious past that Galloway so romanticizes about. Well, bleeding is the operative word here, isn't it? And it's very clear that uh, Israel, especially the Sharonites, like uh, the one you have on the television show, uh, today that uh, they want the Arabs to be bleeding and preferably bleeding uh, at each other's hands. They want the Muslims to be bleeding, preferably at each other's hands. They want to divide the Sunnis and the Shiites as much as they can. They want the Arabs to be fighting each other as much as they can so that their little settler state, as they call it, which was invented in the building behind me, where the British Empire, on behalf of one people, promised a second people, the land which belonged to a third people, and then went about creating it as facts on the ground, they want to continue to defend their little settler gangster state, which today stands in the opprobrium of the rest of the world. And their days are numbered. He can talk about the offensive in the United Nations, but the latest finding that Israel is indeed a gangster terrorist state which murders people on the high seas, which steals other countries' passports to murder Palestinian officials in Dubai. Its days are numbered. They might not be numbered in days or weeks or months or even years, but 
the idea that this settler state can forever keep the Arabs and the Muslims at each other's throat, keep one corrupt king or puppet president in his throne, on his chair forever, is a, a very, very sad mistake. And big change is coming As to the Middle East, and it's not the change, it's not the change that the gangsters <laughs> in the settler state of Israel want. As we are coming too close to the end of this show, Ranan Gesin, in a world uh, that no. is uh, replete with yes. uh, I, I, dictators I, and uh, tyrants all over the place, what makes Iraq so special? You know very well that this was an illegal war. This was deemed illegal by none other than Kofi Annan. So with, with all that you have outlined, there was no reason whatsoever for millions of Iraqis to be refugees and more than a million Iraqi to be dead. Well, Sam, uh, and, and Mr. Galloway, you forget the Iraq-Iran war. Well, who started? Who instigated the Iraq war? It was Saddam Hussein. America. This is a megalomaniac America who decided it. he wants to control the Middle East. And went, not America. Come on. You know, the worst thing, America, the, I, I said the promoter said belong to the British Empire. Saddam but the Hussein crimes, the crimes that Mr. Galloway Britain is committing by supporting terrorist Saddam organizations, that is the worst thing for the Middle East. The cause for bleeding, the cause for bleeding, the Middle East is bleeding because people like Mr. Galloway in the West are supporting Hezbollah, are supporting Hamas, are supporting terrorist organizations, which are the cause for the bleeding of the Middle East. Israel did not create the Sunni Shiite rift. Israel, came, Israel is the only country that has historical rights of being where it was, because it was here long before any of the Arab countries were there. And we have a right to be, to live, and we want to live in peace. We're extending a hand to peace, but what we got from the Iraqis up to this time was only war. I hope that this thing will change in the future. But by supporting terrorist organizations like Hamas, like Hezbollah, Mr. Galloway is not well, look, promoting the, biggest, the cause of peace. He's turning the, the Middle the, East the, back no, into uh, the worst uh, situation I'm, that existed before uh, the U.S. invaded Iran. Look, uh, 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 I really don't want to address you uh, because I don't think you're worth addressing. So I'm saying this to Jassim. No justice, no peace. If there's no justice for the Palestinians, there will no, be no peace for the gangsters in the settler state. That's just a fact. What about justice for I'm Israel, for the people of here. Israel? A nation the, of 3,000 years the, old. 3,000 years well, old. That nation deserves well, you don't, justice as well as the Palestinians, neither, if not more. Yeah. You neither look nor sound nor are named like someone who was there 3,000 years ago to me. But that's irrespective of anything. I was. Uh, my, anything I know because, my family roots 3,000 yeah, no, years back. Maybe well, you don't know well, your family uh, roots, I, I, but I, I do. I very, much <laughs> doubt that, I very much doubt that that's true. This is the myth of the Jewish people, which Israeli academics are now well, uncovering. You see, despite people like you, we are their, still existing and we're growing strong. Uh, Why is it? It's not uh, because uh, of our military actually, mind. Uh, it's because uh, of our conviction. Actually I, can, <laughs> actually, I can make you happy because the best solution is for one country, a democratic country, between the river and the sea, where all the Jews, all the Muslims, and all the Christians can live as equal citizens Before under we the law. Saw the Arab one Israeli man, one woman, struggle. one government. That's what's going to happen. It might not be in your lifetime or mine, but that's what's going to happen. Because no, this no little settler state cannot stand in the Middle East against Before we, before we of history. Today. Before we the solve the Arab-Israeli struggle, George Galloway, I would like to ask you the following. Where do Iraqis yeah. go for justice and uh, uh, to, to get what is due to them? You are sitting behind Westminster. Uh, you were a member of uh, the British Parliament. At the time, Tony Blair, the Prime Minister, was hand in hand with the President of the United States, George Bush, when they launched this illegal war. When will we see justice? Mm. When we will see Tony Blair and George Bush brought to account? Well, we're chasing him, uh, and he can run, and he is running, but he can't hide. He can cancel his book launches, he can cancel his uh, book parties, but one day our legal uh, uh, approach to bringing these people to book will succeed, and one day he and Bush will face justice. If it's not in this life, it will be on the day of judgment, like all of us will have to answer for our sins. Uh, the Iraqis, meanwhile, are going to have to find a national unity. This uh, jigsaw puzzle, this blood-soaked jigsaw puzzle of sectarian divide, which has been so carefully fostered by the occupation authorities, partly to please Israel, will have to be put back together again. 
There were many, many things wrong with Saddam Hussein's Iraq. But at least there was an Iraq. There was a country called Iraq. And for a time, it was a successful country that built uh, something, built a science base, sent its students around the world to become PhDs in the greatest number of any Arab country. Arab war, the uh, Iraq was something. It was really something in the Arab world and in Islamic uh, uh, history and Islamic affairs. If it is ever to be other than a balkanized uh, uh, site or crucible for gangsterism, then it's going to have to be put back together again. So I say the Iraqis have to find some national unity, rise above these sectarian divisions which have been sown amongst them and try to find Iraqi national unity. Until then, I'm afraid there will be neither justice nor peace. Final question to Ranan Gassin. Was it worth it, Ranan Gassin? Yes, I think it was. If, if the world is going to act according to George Galloway, the West is going to act according to George Galloway, they'll be paving the way for the new tyrants of the Middle East, not for democracy, not for secular regime. And therefore, you know, one must take cognizance of the fact and not try to deny history or warp history or sw switch history uh, to its liking. Because if he gives up on the democratic value for which the country, the United States and Great Britain, went to fight in the Middle East, then I think that really the West is doomed. George Galloway, final question to you, and it goes like this. Iraqi politicians, they have been telling us for the past seven years, Iraq has paid enormous price. It has been very painful. But look into the future. The, the bright side is coming. You just have to wait. Are they right? Well, you see, I don't think there's anything democratic about a fatwa from the Grand Ayatollah Sistani uh, moving an entire section of people in obedience. There's nothing democratic about that. The idea that uh, sectarianism, and I give him only as one example, that sectarianism can be the basis for democracy, still less for unity, and without unity there can be no peace, uh, is, is fantastical. Everybody knows that sectarianism has now been institutionalized in Iraq. Uh, it may be that the last election result shows that Iraqis, at least in their majority, simple majority, are recognizing that and searching towards some kind of governance that will unite people across the sectarian divide. That's the meaning, I think, of Alawi, much as I despise him. That's the meaning of his victory uh, in yes. those elections. The people chose his list rather than the other list, which was overtly, systematically sectarian in nature. So I'm not saying that Iraq is doomed forever. But it will never rise above this morass until it can consolidate itself on the basis of Iraqi national unity. I salute all the great people of Iraq, their courage, their strength, and their indefatigability. George Galloway, Ranan Gesin, gentlemen, Th thank you for being guests on Inside Iraq. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To watch the show online, please visit our website, aljazeera.net forward slash English. This is our last episode of Inside Iraq. During the last four years, we have tried to keep you updated about one of the most important stories of our days. We brought you different views, shed lights on controversial issues, and ask relevant but tough questions. It is my sincerest hope that I was able to convey an accurate and impartial picture of what happened in Iraq in the last four wrenching years. And just before I go, I would like to say how much I enjoyed presenting the show. And on behalf of my colleagues here in the studio, and the gallery, I would like to thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on another show on this channel. Goodbye.